Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would address something for you guys that came up yesterday in yesterday's video when I was talking about dietary fat. You guys know I'll link the video here, I'll link it down below. On the skinny on dietary fat, how much do you need? Some people brought up a point, and I thought it was a good point. This was something I had to do a lot of research into personally when I decided to go vegan, and I talked to a number of, of registered dietitians, I talked to medical doctors who treat patients and do a lot of blood work on people who are on vegan diets who promote this and I talked to people I found quite a bit of the relevant data and the interesting thing is this data is useful to even meat eaters people who want to follow whatever sort of diet that the fact of the matter is is this whole idea that DHA and EHA are ultimately the goal of why we need omega-3s and they are critical but all three of them have benefits in the body. It's just that certain benefits can only be obtained by those, those other products. And obviously most people say, well, fish is the obvious source of those fish fat. And that is a very, very powerful concentrated source of them. Now, the issue we run into is that, of course, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And there's plenty of data and even people like Alan Aragon have linked it showing that like three of those one gram fish oil caps a day or even 10 grams of fat from salmon which would give you around three total grams of EPA and DHA actually shows negative health effects in the body. Not only problems with blood clotting, but it can compromise immune function. So too much of that's a bad thing. So there's a fine line between how much you need. And the, the thing that people point out is that, well, Jason, you said the ALA, but our bodies don't convert it well. Well, they're right. Our bodies, meaning typical Americans on a Western diet, do not convert ALA very well. There's a lot of stuff we don't do very well here in the West. And that some people, it's as low as a 5 to 10% conversion rate. So if you were trying to get up to a full gram of EPA and DHA a day, there, it would be something crazy like you might need as much as 10 or 20 grams of ALA. Well, that's an insane amount of, it, of polyunsaturated fat to have to take in. It's actually quite doable, but it, it's excessive. You'd be heaping down three or four <laughs> tablespoons of flax oil in a day. Nobody wants to drink that much oil or add that much dietary fat to their diet without need. So the thing is that it turns out that this isn't equal in everyone and lifestyle factors in your diet play a tremendous role in how much you convert. Now, number one on the list, obviously people who eat any fish, people who have any EPA and DHA in their diet, or who even supplement the fish oil, they convert it at a much lower rate. For obvious reasons, because a lot of those people are getting a lot of it already. The body doesn't really kick in the, the enzymic processes into place to convert it because it doesn't need it because it's already in your diet. But what you find is that people who eat a decent amount of ALA, which is the plant source version, and that's the version we can't produce, which again also has benefits to us, that they've seen in some people when their lifestyle factors is right as high as like a 40% conversion rate. Well, that's not so bad. I mean, if you eat three grams of it a day at 40%, you're going to get tons of EPA and DHA, probably more than you actually need for optimal health at that point. Fantastic. So, but what they find is that people who don't eat fish, they don't supplement and add fish oil or these uh, EPA and DHA supplements converted at a higher rate. Another factor is your ratios of your omega-3 and omega-6. The LA, which is the omega-6, uses the same pathways in the body to convert it into other longer chain omega-6 fatty acids. So if you're eating an excessive amount of LA, which you can actually get away with even four or five to one ratios and still convert the ALA quite well, but a lot of Western diets are extremely high in omega-6, which is not necessarily always a good thing. Now, how bad it is is subject to debate, and it would depend upon a lot of other lifestyle factors. I don't really want to try to tackle that one today. But if you're keeping that at a reasonable level, and there's other omega-6s besides just the LA, but the LA is the one that you're converting through that process, as long as you're not keeping it excessive, then you're okay. Meaning if you're only eating a few grains to get it, or plenty of grains, as long as you're not ultra-high-fat grains, you're not eating large amounts of nuts, you're probably okay. And if you're getting your omega-3s from mixed sources, such as cantaloupes, or walnuts, your ratios are going to be really, really good. Now, if you're getting a lot of it from adding some ground flaxseed in your diet, you're really good because it has a higher omega-3 than omega-6. It will balance you right out. And even other good sources to add in are lots of leafy green vegetables. So if, if you're eating all of those things regularly, you're adding a little flaxseed to your diet, you're eating a lot of raw leafy greens every day, you're not adding anything that has 
converted omega-3s already in it. And this doesn't matter what your diet is. It doesn't matter if you eat a high meat diet, a low meat diet, vegetarian diet, vegan diet. It doesn't matter. Any of you who don't want to have to eat fish or don't want to supplement fish oil in your diet for whatever reasons, then you can still get it from these sources. And if you're following that advice I just gave you, you're getting those plant-based sources, a decent amount of them in, and you're not eating excessive amounts of omega-6 fats, you're probably just fine in your conversion rate, particularly if you have an overall balanced diet, you're healthy and you exercise. You probably don't actually, I don't want to say probably, I'd say realistically, you don't need to worry about it. So that's pretty much what there is. I will link one article and one study. People always want sources and I don't know why because I could pull 20 sources for or 20 sources against something if I really want to cherry pick. But I'm just going to link one for you guys, an article and a write-up and a study from a few years back on it, just so you guys can kind of see that there, there is actually data on this. And there's actually a lot of data on this if you dig for it. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go. And I'll give you guys a quad shot also. If I can actually get this through my shorts. Bam. Quads of peace. <laughs>